Never has a country gone to such extraordinary lengths to remove the enemy's civilian population from harm's way. Yet faced with an absolutely clear-cut case of aggressor and victim, who do you think the United Nations Human Rights Council decided to condemn? Israel. A democracy legitimately defending itself against terror is morally hanged, drawn, and quartered, and given an unfair trial to boot. By these twisted standards, the UN Human Rights Council would have dragged Roosevelt and Churchill to the dock as war criminals. What a perversion of truth. What a perversion of justice. Now, delegates of the United Nations and the governments whom you represent, you have a decision to make. Will you accept this farce? Because if you do, the United Nations would revert to its darkest days when the worst violators of human rights sat in judgment against the law-abiding democracies, when Zionism was equated with racism, and when an automatic majority could be mustered to declare that the earth is flat. If you had to choose a date when the United Nations began its descent almost a free fall and lost the respect of many thoughtful people in the international community. It was that decision in 1975 to equate Zionism with racism. Now this body has a choice to make. If it does not reject this biased report, it would vitiate itself. It would begin or re-begin the process of vitiating itself from its own relevance and importance. But it would do something else. It would send a message to the terrorists everywhere saying, terrorism pays. All you have to do is launch your attacks from densely populated areas and you will win immunity. And then a third thing, in condemning Israel, this body would also deal a mortal blow to peace. Let me explain why. When Israel left Gaza, many hoped that the missile attacks would stop. Others believed that even if they don't stop, at the very least, Israel would have made this gesture, extraordinary gesture for peace. But it would have international legitimacy to exercise its right of self-defense if peace failed. What legitimacy? What self-defense? The same UN that cheered Israel as we left Gaza, the same UN that promised to back our right of self-defense, now accuses us, my people, my country, of being war criminals. And for what? For acting responsibly in self-defense, for acting in a way that any country would act with a restraint unmatched by many. What a travesty. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel justly defended itself against terror. This biased and unjust report provides a clear-cut test for all governments. Will you stand with Israel? Or will you stand with the terrorists? We must know the answer to that question now. Now, not later. Because if Israel is again asked to take more risk for peace, we must know today that you will stand with us tomorrow. Only if we have the confidence that we can defend ourselves can we take further risks for peace? 
And make no mistake about it, all of Israel wants peace. Any time an Arab leader genuinely wanted peace with us, we made peace. We made peace with Egypt, led by Anwar Sadat. We made peace with Jordan, led by King Hussein. And if the Palestinians truly want peace, I and my government and my people will make peace. But we want a genuine peace, a defensible peace, a permanent peace. In 1947, this body voted to establish two states for two peoples, a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jews accepted this resolution. The Arabs rejected it and invaded the embryonic Jewish state with the hopes of annihilating it. We asked the Palestinians to finally do what they refused to do for 62 years. Say yes to a Jewish state. As simple, as clear, as elementary as that. 